Now this morning we come to the time of honoring our graduates. And this morning uh, we have three that we want to honor. And the first that we have that we're going to honor this morning is Elise Mullins. Elise Mullins is an honor graduate of Franklin County High School. Uh, she plans to attend uh, Kapile Lincoln uh, in the fall where she'll be playing soccer for the Lady Wolves. Uh, she'll be taking pre-nursing there. And her plans are to leave there and go on to U uh, USM and receive her Bachelor's of Science uh, nursing degree uh, from USM. Our first uh, college graduate, or moving on, should I say, is uh, Bailey Carberry. Uh, Bailey is uh, graduating Kapile Lincoln, and she has uh, received a um, Associates of Arts uh, degree. Uh, she is now attending William Carey, where she's pursuing uh, her bachelor's degree in uh, music therapy. So, Bailey Carberry. Our last graduate, of course, is uh, Brant Mullins. And Brant is a graduate of jo uh, honor graduate of Jones College, where he received a uh, uh, associates of science, uh, excuse me, associates degree in liberal arts, and uh, he plans to attend o uh, University of Mississippi or Ole Miss in the fall, and uh, he will be pursuing a bachelor's of science in exercise science. So we say congratulations to these three today. Thank you uh, for uh, we praise you for your hard work, and we pray. Uh, God's best wishes on you today.
saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you our Lord of all. Now it's time that we come to God's Word uh, this morning, as I said earlier. Uh, the title of the sermon is Life Above the Struggle. Uh, and I subtitle this, He Holds My Future. You know, we all love that song that we know because He lives. Because He lives. And we know we can have a future. But I title this today, uh, he holds my future. I want to encourage our graduates. I want to encourage them to look to God's word, to look to his leadership, to look to his guidance, as you always have. You know, it's the hardest thing sometimes in life to, to understand that just because we get our first real taste of freedom to be away from our parents, 24 hours a day, uh, six days or, or five days a week, whatever it might be. In some cases, even seven days a week, we're living on campus there. And, and, and now we have the freedom to do as we want. You know, we have to still understand that which we've been taught, that which is ingrained in us, that which we say we believe in, that which we have gro grown accustomed to as our what leads us, what guides us, what drives us even. I want us to think about that. And I, we're going to look again this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And I thought how last Sunday, uh, celebrating those that had given their lives, uh, how we uh, celebrated those that had laid down their lives for our country, that we might have a future. Remember that? They traded their tomorrows in. That we might have a future. Think about that. They fought for the freedoms that we have, that we enjoy today. And we don't need uh, to misuse them. We don't need to, to go through life as if uh, everything in this, this idea of of life is free, that somebody paid a price. For you graduates, somebody uh, got up early and went to work to help you get through high school. They put clothes on your back. They took you to the doctor, to the dentist, bought you a car to ride in, all those different things that they've done to see you successful thus far. And as they continue to invest in you, each and every day from this day forward as they have in the past to see that your future might be bright. Just like those guys and gals that gave their life for our country have invested in you. I say to you today, number one, don't let the Lord down by making a change of lifestyle when you walk away. Number two, don't let your parents down or your friends, or your teachers, or your school. But most of all, don't let yourself down. You know what? When sometimes uh, just because there is a shortcut doesn't mean it's the best way or the best thing. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you today about is the idea of life. And remember last week, I, 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 I shared these verses, and I want to read these verses again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Therefore, do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us 
a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal I want you to think about that you know as Paul was writing here uh, he was in Ephesus and he was writing to the church at Corinth and they had they had some problems going on with the church and Paul had uh, made a reference to them of how they might discipline they discipline this one well and uh, he's commending them somewhat in, in chapter 2 here of how they did it but he's also inviting them to do this and that would be this that they might accept this brother or sister back that they might uh, love them that they may uh, receive them in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul was facing the challenge of the ministry. And that was that people were questioning his motives. They were mocking him. They were doing all these things toward Paul because, you know, they were saying, you know, Paul does this because it benefits Paul. You know, because Paul had a standard. Paul told them, this is the standard. The Lord Jesus is standard is the standard. This is what you must live by. You know what? You need to forgive one another. You need to love one another. You need to encourage one another. And that we need to live as a, a live a life of holiness. And that was his command to them. And that was the command of the Lord. But Paul was using that to instruct them, to encourage them. And then they uh, did not always like what they heard. So they would begin to question Paul's motives. And Paul is trying to tell them that you know what? You have to stay consistent. You have to stay strong. You have to keep fighting and forging ahead even when it's not easy. Graduates, I, I challenge you. You know what? Uh, these coming days or weeks we have already been in the challenge all through the early spring of this year and in now into the summer. And I want you to understand, when you go to school in the fall, you're going to face challenges or the struggle. You're going to be out there in that life and you're going to be struggling. Some days you're not going to, you're not going to want to do certain things. You know, it may be that you don't want to get up, but you got to get up because you got to go to class. It may be that you might not want to exercise because you did get up. You stayed up late, you got up, you went to class, now you'd rather come in and you'd rather sleep than exercise. Or maybe it's the fact that you put off, that you put off and then you really need to be studying now, not tomorrow. Because other things can happen and keep you from being able to do the things you need to do. So I want to challenge you to listen. And I want you to take this idea for a moment in the words of Paul as we go through this. And as we kind of kind of go back a little bit maybe uh, in the idea from last week and see some comparisons here. But I want you to listen to this. And as I shared this with you last week, as this... Where there is life, there is struggle. And where there is no struggle, there is no life. I want you to understand that. And listen to the description or the definition of life. Life, the quality that distinguishes a vital and functional being from a dead body. You know what? There's life within us. There's life within us that shows that we are alive. And it's who we are. It's our personality. It's all those things about us that makes us unique from God's creation. But you're sitting here planning out your life in a moment in time. Your future. And what does it hold for you? Well, as a believer, I want to tell you this. I don't know it all, but I do know this. He holds your future. So as you've sought God's wisdom, as you've sought God's leadership in your life thus far, continue to do that. Continue to do that. You know what? Don't put your mind so much on the struggle. Don't put your mind so much on the everyday things. Yes, deal with them. Get up and do them. But remember, there's a greater picture. You know, for, for Elise, Elise is, you're looking, Elise, at that, that uh, BSN in nursing. 
And I want to tell you, there's going to be several days between now and the day that you walk across the stage at USM and receive that degree. And Bailey's already there. You're already there at Wheaton Carey, searching out and seeking out the idea of receiving that music therapy degree. And I want you to understand something. You know what? There's several days going to pass between now and then. So you can't always focus on the temporary. You can't always focus on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes, you deal with them. But the day you're looking for is that graduation day. So you have to keep in mind you have bigger plans. You know what? And the struggle is worth it. You know what? The challenges you face today and the battle that you fight now will pay off when you receive that diploma. For Brent, you know, when you think about that, you got to understand that every day, sometimes, uh, every day is a challenge. But I want you to understand something, Brent, that, that you need to focus on the things of God. You want to you kind of keep in mind and trust Him and understand, yes, today might be hard, but my plans are for tomorrow. My plan is for down the road the day that I walk across the stage and receive my diploma as an old Miss graduate. And exercise science. You know what? That's what you want to remember. That's what you want to focus on. Did you know what? That sometimes in the life of a Christian, there are, cer there are certain things that happen. The Christian life faced with challenges. You know what? Listen to this definition of that. It would be the, the sequence of physical and mental experiences to make up the existence of an individual met with difficulties requiring faith to succeed them. The life of a Christian facing struggle. You know what? We've got to have faith. You know what? I know that what I'm doing today and what I'm going through today is going to be worth it one day just as it is in the life of the believer. You know what? What we face today, what we battle today, and what we live out today in faith will pay off one day in glory. Just as it will for you as you live your life today and as you have to get up early to study. Or if you stay up late and study and get up early to go to class to take the test. One day it will be worth it. One day it will be worth it. You know what? Somewhat similarly, it's like this. You'll be trading in your todays sometimes for your tomorrows. Because in college and in the college life there are friends and they're going to want you to uh, go maybe be involved in intramural sports or, or, you know, or go out at night and go to the movie after you've had a long day at practice or, or in class or whatever and they're going to want you to, to maybe put off studying but I will tell you this, there are times when you can, but there are times when there's no other time than the present, or there's no time like the present and to study, to be prepared and be ready right now. That, that one night of, or two hours of pleasure and watching a movie, uh, being invested in study, really does a lot for your future down the road. So to give up, Today, to give up tonight would be great that you might receive that diploma one day. And that's how you need to think about it. I want to challenge you today, graduate and church, this idea here. The first thing that I want to challenge you with this is focus on what God is doing. You know, so many times when we, 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 we get to the point to where we are like we have been here lately, especially. We not, don't have a lot of church, you know, other than church through the Internet. But to, instead of having, you know, I heard somebody say, you know, it's going to be hard to get up and, 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 and get dressed and come to church because I've been so used to lounging in my pajamas, drinking my coffee, and now I'm going to come to church, it's going to be different. Well, I kind of agree with you. We've all been a little lax in that idea. We don't get up and fix our hair and do all the things we do and sit in the, in the living room as we would if we were in the sanctuary here. But I want you to understand something. We can still focus on what God is doing, even in the absence of this church building. Graduates, 
I don't want you to forget about this. You've been taught since you have been old enough to understand that God loves you, that God is investing in you, that you were created for a purpose and God's got a plan for you. And I don't want you to lose sight of that. I want you to continue to focus on what God is doing. I want you to continue to focus on that. If we believe that God knows what is best for us, then turn to Him. You know what? Keep turning. Every time you turn around and you got to make a decision in your life, be praying about it. Have already prayed about it. Or tell somebody I can't answer yet because i got to pray about it. Continue to pray about it. Consult your parents. Consult a close friend, a Christian friend. Because they want what's best for you. Listen to what, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, because this is what I want you to do. Because I want you to understand, when you go off to college and you have to live by yourself, at first it seems fun. But then sometimes loneliness sets in. Sometimes hardship sets in for one reason or another. Maybe difficulty with people on campus or maybe difficulty with a class that you've not ever taken. You know, all those things. Something happens. And I want you to listen to this. What Paul is writing here to the church, he tells them this. He said, therefore, talking about us as believers, therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing. Now I want to challenge you here. I don't, I don't want to think about the idea of perishing because I don't want you to draw a comparison here today. Yes, our outward man is perishing. Folks, don't forget that every day that we live, we get one closer, one day closer to seeing Jesus. So, graduates, just because you leave uh, Roxy and you go off somewhere else doesn't mean you've gotten away from the idea that life continues. No, I want you to take think of it this way. It's even more precious now because I have one less day to live for the Lord today than I did yesterday. I want you to think about this. Therefore, therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. For the life of the believer, for the life of the believer, our life is being built up in Christ. We're being, even though we face struggle, even though we face strife, even though we face challenges, we're getting stronger in our faith. And folks, that's what I want you to remember. Graduates, I want you to remember about your faith. I don't want you to leave your faith in Roxy, I want you to take your faith with you. You live by faith. And remember what Romans 8, 28 tells you. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. To those who are called according to His purpose. You've been taught that God is investing in you. That God has created you for a purpose. Remember that. I want to share something with you that I read. Uh, and, and I thought it was great. And I included this idea of, you know what, one of the things that we got to understand about life, and so many people are always telling people, man, I'm just dying to get my life started. And I read this, and I thought this is truly how it is. Listen to what it says. First, I was dying to finish high school and start college. Then I was dying to finish college and to start working. Then I was dying to marry and have children. And then I was dying for my children to grow old enough for school. And then I was dying to retire. And now I am dying and suddenly I realize I forgot to live. I want us to know something. I want us to believe that you know what? That God's given us a life to live. And we want to live it to the fullest. And the one way that we can live it to the fullest is have our eyes turned toward heaven and on Him and believe that God loves you. That God's got a plan for you. He has a future for you. And you're going to follow Him in faith and trust Him. You know what? I love that Scripture. Uh, when Jesus came to the disciples walking on the water. And they looked out and they saw Him coming. They thought it was a ghost. And Matthew chapter 14 tells this. And I'm going to share it with you. Listen to what God's Word says. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw Him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out of fear. I want to tell you something. Sometimes we have fear. Verse 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. Get this. It is I. 
Do not be afraid. You know what? I want you to remember that God is at work in your life. I want you to remember that. Verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, it, 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 excuse me, and Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And Peter had come down out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. I want to start with the last thing. I want you to remember this, that Jesus is truly the Son of God. He said he will not leave you nor forsake you. So continue in faith. Believe Him. Trust Him. Follow Him. Understand that. And remember this. That sometimes in life, you're going to be called out. You're going to be called out of the boat. You're going to be different than all the others. And you know what? Sometimes that challenge that you face is a little bit bigger than you. And yes, you have the faith in the moment to step out and to begin it. But remember, it's going to take the faith to see you through. Just like Peter. It's a great thing. You know, that he heard, I think he heard that word. Don't be afraid. It is I. But I want you to understand something, that when God is working, when we're having to focus on the things of God, sometimes they're bigger than our minds can ever think. And I don't know that Peter really thought it, thought it all through when he asked, when he said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come and I'll come. You know what? I'm going to tell you, he loved the Lord. He believed in God. He believed in Jesus Christ. So, man, he knew it was possible. He knew what he could see. When he calls him, he jumps up and he gets out on top of the water. But then all of a sudden, he realizes, you know what? This is Peter. I'm on the water. He took his eyes off Jesus. He began to look around at all the things going on. And all of a sudden, he began to sing. I want to encourage you with this. That sometimes, you know what? God's going to call us to places. They're beyond us. But God's still calling us there. And we can do it as long as we have the faith. As long as we trust Him. But remember, when we find ourselves, like Peter, we find ourselves in some place where God may have called us to or called us to a work or called us in the, the, something that seems to be a struggle for us. Remember this. We're never too big. We're never too smart, too strong, too courageous. And I hope never too prideful to cry out to Him to take us out of something that's bigger than us. That He will save us, That He, because He has made you a promise. Remember this, He will never leave you nor forsake you. The next thing I want you to do is this as graduates is this. Trust what God is doing. You know what? You've been told that God has created you for a purpose. He's got a plan for you and you've bought into it. You've worked hard through high school uh, for Brant and Bailey. Uh, they've worked through two years of community college there and they have gotten themselves prepared for the next level. Y'all all have. Uh, and I want you to know something. And I don't, want you, I don't want you to all of a sudden believe that you're in control of everything. I don't. I want you to continue to trust God to lead you into everything. That you could say, Lord, I know what I want, but Lord, what would you have for me? Lord, teach me, and then trust what God is doing. As He leads you, just follow. You know, that's the hardest thing to do sometimes, is just to follow. You know, is to follow. But I want you to understand something, too. Words are powerful things. And I want you to know what we say we believe and what we believe and how we, we respond to it and in the actions that follow, they add up in our life and they begin to tell us. Listen again, 2 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, excuse me, uh, ver chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. You know what I can imagine for you folks that uh, when you were first brought to school that first day, and, and for some children when they first go to kindergarten, they're afraid to be left by their parents. Because they've not been away from their parents very long. And they're afraid to be away from their parents. So they're very nervous and some even cry. Some have hard times dealing with that. But I want you to know, by the time you get to about the fourth grade, then you don't need mama to walk you in on the first day anymore. You're trying to get her to stay in the car, but mom is concerned, dad is concerned, so they want to come in with you. You know what? I want you to know as you grow, as you keep maturing, you know, as you keep growing, you know, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa have done a lot for you and they will continue to do that. But you're going to have to now begin to stand on your own two feet and be in college and, and be there where you're going to make every decision apart from them. But I pray that you continue to remember that He holds your future. And your future is bright. Trust in Him. And trust in what God is doing. And ask Him daily, Lord, what would you have me do? Lord, lead me. And understand that the struggle. You know what? Sometimes uh, you may, uh, in college, uh, when you're there and you're living the life of the believer, you may not always be popular. That's just a light affliction. You know what? Sometimes... Uh, you may spend a lot of time alone because you're trying to live your life as the life of a believer. You're working hard to, to maintain that relationship and that faith. And when you single yourself out, then you may spend some time alone. But understand this. Those times that you have to do that right now, that time that you put in is nothing, nothing compared to the eternal weight of glory. But not only that, you could use that time separated for studying, for learning, for doing. Understand that there is one purpose you go to college. Yes, we love the life that comes along with it. We enjoy the fun. We enjoy the growth in that. But it is to get an education. So we need to remember that. And in trusting in that fact that you know what? That right now... What I'm doing now, it may seem to not really amount to a whole lot. But then one day, it's going to pay off. And I can't understand it right now. I don't understand all it's going to mean to me. But I do know that they promised me that if I will do what i got to do each and every day on this campus, that one day I'm going to receive a degree. You don't know what school you may be teaching at, what hospital you may be at. You don't understand it. You don't understand the life that you're going to touch thereafter for at least being a nurse. You know what? One day she may be there in a labor delivery place with, and look upon the face of a child born right there. See that child for the first time, a new life. And she can begin to pray for that child, but also the, the health care that she would be providing for her mother. Or in an ICU room, like it is now, taking care of those that are on breathing machines. Baby, with that student that's, or that person that's dealing and having to have music therapy, the idea you never know whose life you may touch. For Brent, who he's going to help maintain their health or what they might do, what he might teach them later down the road. Think about the life that you may touch. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And I want you to think about this for a moment. You've not really thought about this, but when you get, you know, the other day I heard uh, on the radio some guy on there want to give, want us people to give donations to fight against poverty. And folks, I believe in that. But I want to tell you something, you know, we, we need to remember uh, the greatest thing to fight against poverty is this education. And hard work. If we will do those things, we can fight, give ourselves a fighting chance. But if we ourselves don't become educated and if we ourselves 
don't have a good work ethic and don't work hard, it's hard for those things to pay off for us. But I want to tell you something. When we take our eyes off what God is doing, then we will stumble as well. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us this. That now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You hope for a degree, so therefore you go to class each and every day. You study hard, you work hard, and it pays off later when you receive your degree and you go out and get that job and now you're in control of your life. And I want to tell you something. It's definitely not going to be easy. It's definitely not going to be easy. You're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to remember what it means to continue to work. And I want you to understand, and I, I don't think there's probably any um, experience in the Bible that's, that's, that tells the, the difference of faith, and it comes from the words of the Savior out of his own mouth to the people or the, the disciples of that day. And listen to what it says in Matthew chapter 21, verse 20. And it says, and when the disciples saw, because he talked about the cursing of the fig tree. And it says, and when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither so soon? Je so Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also you'll say that this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer and believe, you will receive. I want you to understand something. This is the call to faith. This is the call to believe God. You, got, you have to believe that God loves you. You have to believe He wants what's best for you. And if you continue to trust in what He is doing, and you continue to follow the purpose for your life, He will slowly, constantly reveal what He has in store for you. And He will never leave you wrong. Faith is an important thing. Faith is important for you to continue to hang on to. Don't let it lead you 12 or 13 or 14 years into your life and then all of a sudden begin to think, well, I don't need faith anymore because I have me. I have my friends. I have my life. But remember, this life here that we live in in the moment as teenagers, in the moment in our, in our 20s, it's very temporary. College life only lasts, or should last, I say, for, for four to six, sometimes eight years, for if you're going for a doctorate. But for most people, you know, it's only two to four years. And then they have to move on. So faith, you don't want a, you don't want a snapshot of where your faith has fallen. It reminds you of what Peter wrote in First Peter uh, chapter uh, First Peter chapter one, verse seven about faith and listen to how he compares faith that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes people seek after gold really understand that though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ you know what faith being tested you know what? Your faith will be tested when you leave home to go to college. There will be a challenge. There's one last thing I want to remind you of. May we be found faithful when our faith is tested. But I want us to understand this. Understand the temporary, temporariness. And focus on the things of eternity. Remember this, graduate. Don't focus on the things that are temporary right now, but think about your future. Your future. You know what? Don't think about how hard it is to, to have to get up early and study or go to bed late because you're studying. Don't think about those things. Just do what is required. Trusting in the Lord that He'll help you get through it. Do your... Discipline yourself. You know, as Paul was telling the, the folks of that day in the, in the church there at Corinth, it was about discipline. It was about in the way they lived their life. They, you know, he was requiring them to live, as the Scripture said, to be holy.
to be holy as He is holy, to do the things that God requires. And I ask you today, you know what? Life's going to be full of ups and downs and challenges and struggles. You know what? And I want you to understand some of them are going to be larger than others. But I want to remind you of what Paul shared with the church that day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. For the things which are seen right now, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know what? Sometimes it's, high, it's hard to, to, to always focus on the fact that one day we could be going home to be with Jesus because the alarm clock goes off early in the morning and we got to get to work. You know, uh, children are crying, got to be fed. Diapers have to be changed. Baths have to be given. All those things. You know what? Alarm goes off in college. Graduate, you have to go to class. You know what? You have to go to class. You have to be here. You got to be there. You got to make sure you maintain your budget. All those different things as you go to school. And I pray that God blesses in all of those. But I want you to understand something. That if we focus on all the things, if the, if the things that are temporary, that are going on right now, become all that we are, it'd be hard to think about tomorrow. It'd be hard to think about our future. It'd be hard to even really fathom eternity because we're so consumed with everything of right now. Now I say that. I know it sounds kind of like I'm contradicting, but I want you to understand something. That when you think about the purpose, Lord, the purpose in which God created you for, and you think about what your purpose in life is at this point, what you believe, if for Elise believes she needs, she's going to be a nurse, she believes that's her calling. For for uh, Bailey, she's going to be a therapist. For Brant, he's going to be like a scientist or something. You know, as you start thinking about these things, as you start thinking about them, and, and, and I want you to understand something, if you're going to achieve that goal, then the little things of right now, the little struggles and the little challenges you face now can't add up. They can't add up to what that weight, that weight of eternal glory or that, that weight of how it will affect your life later. But I want you to understand something. The things of right now, the challenges of studying, the things of challenges of, of making sure that you got everything paid for, your, your money, your budget, your, travel back and forth, clean clothes, all of those things. I want you to understand something. Yes, they're going to be challenging. But you have to understand those challenges are only temporary compared compared to what the future holds. But I want you to understand something. What you're doing right now is dealing with the things that can be seen in faith for the things right now. Sometimes it's hard for us to believe we'll ever get there. I've seen it said by many people that have graduated. I didn't ever think I would make it. But by the grace of God, I did. I want to share a song with you to close. Just to remember this. Because this is graduate. This is what you need to remember. The promise that God has made you. Jesus saved you. That you have placed your faith in Him. And trust in Him. And follow Him even now, understanding, understanding that these things that you deal with now are temporary. And what you're placing your faith in is what's yet to come. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. Perfect submission. All is at rest. In my Savior, I am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with
found his goodness and lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Remember, you have the blessed assurance of knowing that Jesus is mine. He is to be trusted. He wants what's best. Thank Him for all that He's doing and keep your eyes. Father God, Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for your word, for the truth of it. Lord, I thank you for the message. Father, I thank you for these that have graduated, Lord, that have moved on to other classes, Lord, to other colleges, Lord, to other schools. Father, we just ask that you bless Elise. Lord, we ask that you bless Bailey. Bless Brent, Father God. Lord, for all the graduates across our county and our state and our nation, Father, we pray that you give them strength. Lord, this has been a trying year for them. Lord, we just pray you continue to walk with them. Lord, teach them, lead them, and guide them. But Father, we pray most of all that they always have their hearts and their eyes on you. Lord, their minds in your word, trusting you, knowing that you love them, that you care for them. Lord, they were created with a purpose. And Father God, Lord, when we walk in your will, Lord, our purpose will always be made known. So again, Father, we thank you for today. For Jesus and all he means to us. We ask that you forgive us where we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.